All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. It is Dude Sessions Part 3 of 4 this week. Man, oh man, a lot of good content. We're going to keep things going here. We have a very special guest. He's bald, which means he's beautiful. He's got a very manly beard, as always. Look at that. It's trimmed. It's clean. He's good at smoking meat. He's good at cooking meat. He's good at wrapping things in bacon. He may or may not have the best barbecue in the world. He said that. I did not say that. And then also, he is just a good-hearted man. It's bringing a lot of love and positivity to the world of TikTok. Moe's Barbecue and Grill. What's up, man? Hey, man. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. No problem, man. How you doing, man? Oh, living a dream, you know, that's how I do. <laughs> so, uh, what's the what so everyone who isn't up to date, he's been having a, a rough day with the car. Do you or do oh, you yeah. not well, have the car? The car's done. The car is done, is in my driveway, and it is fixed. Yes. <laughs> he's free. That's all I need to said about that. I'm done with that thing. <laughs> he's free. Yes. Oh god, it was so nice. Then I got to it. I'm like, really? Oh, I don't have any gas in this thing. <laughs> don't <laughs> fix that problem quick, though. Yeah. What Planet Hollywood shirt, man? That thing's that's, yeah. That's old school. What? What? Which Planet Hollywood? Oh, that's a support. That's a support. Our truth. We got that from uh, oh. like Orlando, Florida, I think. Oh, okay. When we went down there with Disney. Disney are uh, the uh, Epcot. That's where they have it. Okay. Um, never been down there. I've been told it's awesome, but once our kids get a little bit older, and hopefully I get a little more richer, we'll start going down there. Go once without the kids. I'm telling you, <laughs> I've heard. I've heard, you. I've heard it's unreal. I've heard it's unreal. It, it really is. <laughs> uh, Tokyo Disney's awesome too. So if you ever get a chance to do that, please do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I heard it's all. I heard it's all literally fun and games. And oh yeah, it's great. Um. So. Uh, first off, I'm appreciative that you decided to join. You are the inaugural barbecue dude session guy on here, so you are the awesome. first. Um, so that's, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> you literally have to set the bar, and, and you know, because you got uh, we got pew pew life coming on Monday. Yep, yep, yep. So we and then tell uh, me about that. Yep, yep. So and then uh, the Grill King, uh, Houston, the week after that. So yes. So you, uh, hey, so all, my, I saw this all my thanks to you. Hey, I, you know, I got, I got to spread the love around, man. I can't, I can't do it by myself. There you go. Hey, we're just gonna keep passing it forward, man. Uh, we're hoping That's that right. it, it works out pretty well. I got. Oh yeah. Hang on here. I gotta block somebody. Oh, I got sunglasses. <laughs> oh, thanks, how'd, you, how'd you do that? Thanks, Dallas Chef. Appreciate it, brother. Someone throws. You can throw glasses on shade, shades on people. That's wild. Yeah, it, it, you got it, you got points at the bottom. I, I don't really know how that works. Um, yeah, I've, I've given a few out. You know, hooking up. You know, big old Texan and uh, beer, the barbecue chef, and those guys. It's, uh, yep. Yeah, you, you got to pay money, but you know, I want to support. I want to support the guys that are doing this too. Mm -hmm. Especially the guys that. Oh, <laughs> oh you got. Ah! <laughs> that is the coolest thing ever. Oh yeah, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Dallas. Because it's funny Thank when, you go, you. when you go to one of big old Texans lives, he gets them like constantly. It's like. So he always is a pose when he does it. He's like, ah, and he has like somebody gives him the little kisses, that little hearts pop up everywhere. It's, oh it's funny God. seeing it. that big old muscular dude. Like, oh, like, what are you he, doing? <laughs> he is the best. He is the best. He really is. Let's talk about him. Uh, you know, for all those that aren't familiar with uh, the big, big old Texan, he's just a yeah. massive macho. You would, most people would say, and I don't mean this to be mean, they'd be like, oh, there goes another meathead. But this guy yep. is like, unbelievable and oh yeah so is and you know he's all about positivity creating the love um he's overcome some stupid unreal obstacles in life that i don't wouldn't wish Serious any of our enough. worst enemies ever oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you dallas dallas chef with it again what's up bro <laughs> he hit me again <laughs> man, I yeah the texan i i gotta i gotta give it a texan man he is awesome i mean uh, I was invited to do his moder be, be a part of his moderator team yesterday uh, by Corey Craft, and hopefully he's going to pop up in here sometime soon. Um, there, the thing with having a lot of people follow you is a lot of people are trying to, to take you down, and it's happened to him quite a bit. And unfortunately, and, then, and there's really no reason. Yeah, he curses. I curse. He's had a lot of tattoos. He looks like he's an intimidating beast of a man, but he's really the nicest guy. 
I mean, he's he he doesn't he's he's a big advocate of you know veterans and you know making sure they don't you know because you know we, we lose twenty two a day and he really takes a stand against that and I have to respect the man for that and knowing his and I, I sat in with a story where he talked about talked about his son and I I cried like a baby because any man that has to has to deal with burying their kid oh God I, I couldn't imagine that. Yeah, it's a uh, it yeah. broken heart. Yeah, that that's the one that probably like you know I mean it hit, hits a lot like especially here us dudes as I'd call us here on this you know at the end of the day a lot of us dudes have have kids and especially a lot of us have baby girls too so yeah there's always that that extra bond there so but so going back to him how has he kind of inspired you to kind of do what you're doing on your channel which is a lot of spreading the love. And, you know, yeah. and uh, keeping things positive. But you found a way, you know, food is the uni universal love language. And uh, so has that been kind of the inspiration um, for why you kind of got into what you're doing? Well, uh, it's, it's weird how it started, because when it started, first person I ran into on the FYP, it was Gary, the barbecue chef. And I got this wild, loud guy with a huge beard telling me how to make make uh whatever it was and telling me to stick it up where the sun don't shine. And I thought it was the funniest thing ever. Like, okay. So this guy obviously went for it. Right. So now how can I do this myself, but not steal someone else's shtick? I don't want to do that. I want to be my own person. And obviously I am being a slightly nervous guy behind the camera. Like, hi, I'm, you know, kind of here. And I stammer my words all the time. And then it was about, it was about a week or no, not a week, but a couple of days later going through again and I see this huge, massive a dude. And I'm thinking, this dude could crush my skull with his fingers. <laughs> and, it, and then I was like, okay. So I watched his video, and it was funny. And then I went to the next one. I saw he didn't do his crazy eyes stick, where he had the hair, and I go, oh, you're staying. <laughs> and I saw that, and I'm like, that is hilarious. And then I started digging into him a little more, and he, is, he was a very positive guy. So you know what? Cool. I could do it. could be very positive, because the one thing I noticed all the food channels here on TikTok, YouTube, or wherever... YouTube became toxic. Facebook is just dead weight um, for me personally. That's my opinion. I'm not telling everybody to leave it. Um, and then I was like, oh, you know, I could do that. So I kind of got a couple followers, did a couple things, led people to my YouTube, and it wasn't working. I kind of gave up on TikTok for a little while. I came back, said, all right, let me give this another shot, give this another look. And I saw not even a week or two afterwards, I saw Gary the Barbecue Chef come on to his channel and say, hey, you know, these companies don't want to work with me. I'm try I thought about making this my living here in the next two months because I was, you know, I'm doing really well, but they don't want to work with the agent. Doesn't can't get me anything, and I, I just don't want to do it because I because they say I curse too much. And I literally came out irritated because the one thing I can't stand is cancel culture. You're gonna blast somebody for something they either do or did, however long ago or whatever they're doing now that's working for them. And he even liked it, and I got a lot of traction on it. And it just took off. I started, I woke up the next day and I have like 200 more followers. Like, oh my God. Uh, uh, okay, uh, that's cool. 200, 200 is pretty average. I kind of put myself out there in front of a big guy. So maybe they're the trolls coming for me. I don't know. And then it started gaining more traction, more traction, more traction. And the next thing I know, I'm sitting on like a 1,000 something followers. And I'm like, holy crap, this just happened. And like, it seemed like that, like, like overnight. And so, you know what? I decided I'm not going to squander this. How fair is it that I got to a thousand followers and nobody else did? Well, I see a lot of talent. The problem with food is, especially doing outdoor food or generalized cooking, you can't make a gourmet meal three times a day. So if you're really trying to get traction, you need to, you need to put out content constantly. So no one's going to cook for a week, put out a bunch of content and die for another week. That's not going to happen. So instead of letting that happen, I decided to start putting everybody in the public eye. So, all right, you know what? If you're going to support me, I need you to support these guys too. That's important to me. So I started putting on individually. Then I started going to the FYP and I was finding more and more and more. I was taking screenshots, doing one at a time. And then I realized, looked at my phone and I'm like, I am 40 to 50 screenshots deep. It's taking me about 10, 15 minutes per video, maybe 20. And I need to make this more efficient. So I started coughing up five, six at a time. And then I was getting positive feedback from everybody. I, people messaged me, thank you for helping me out. Uh, because of you, I've got like, you know, 
500 followers when I was at 50 a week ago or something like that. And they keep putting out content and they were just getting all the success, you know, success is either the beholder there because of the fact that you got guys that are like a million followers, you know, we're getting like a couple thousand, which is great. But it was, it then, you know, there's been a few that have, I, I saw their stuff where they were like two, 300 followers. I promoted them, but they kept putting out content and then they were just rocketing by me. And it's like, you know, could, you, why get mad about that? What, what I, what I set out to achieve is, you know, was my goal. So they, they surpassed that goal because they, not only did I promote them, they promoted themselves, which is huge. And that was my goal. And that's been my goals that they want. And I am never going to stop as long as I can keep getting those screenshots and people that are under a thousand because they get deserve to go live and show what they can do as much as I do. Right. And I believe it's uh you use the hashtag, uh, hashtag road to a thousand is uh, the one road for everybody out there that wants to, uh, take up this challenge and uh, carry the, carry the torch. Um, right. but yeah, I mean, and, uh, no, I think it's great, you know, and, you know, and just, I know the people that you've helped me introduce to, since you're like the networking guy, you know, like you've kind of put, you've picked up that flag and you planted it in. You're like, all right, I'm the facilitator guy. I'm like, Hey right. man, like, do you, do you know any other barbecue guys that'd be interested in coming on here? And like, immediately you're like this guy, this guy, this guy. And all I had to say was like, Hey, I got your name from big Mo. And the universal answer was, I love big Mo. <laughs> that, so how does that make you feel? Dude, I, every mess, every DM, every like, every every comment, it, it makes me feel like a million bucks. And the thing is, everyone's like, oh, you got to worry about the haters. You got to worry about, about the trolls. And honestly, I've had, I, I've had three. And they're gone. All I do, and it's one thing I, it's the one thing I noticed was we are being divided by the TV. I don't like the TV. Me and the TV don't get along because they say stuff that isn't true or is half true and it hurts people. So I put, I saw, I saw, I sent my first big old text in live. He said, in first thing is what I heard one of his moderators say, and I believe it was, actually, I actually don't remember which one, UPS man. I wish I didn't do his whole name, but no politics, no religion, no social justice, no gender stuff. And I said, you know what? That's it. <laughs> that's how I that's how I get people together. I, I cut out the crap that is set out there to make us different. I don't give a crap about your skin color. I don't give a crap who you choose to love. I don't give a crap who you voted for. You can unite with me under food despite what our beliefs are. And I stick by that. I don't care. I've had people say, come on there, and I know for a fact what they are, you know, whatever what affiliation they are, because they either say it or I can figure it out. However, it has not stopped me from talking to anyone. If they said, hey, I kind of need, I can't need someone to just listen, I've listened. I don't care what side you're on. I don't care what you look like. I've listened. It's taken me away from other stuff, but to me, that's worth it. People forget the one common, th like the one universal like thing. And it's, it's okay to disagree. Like, it's okay. Yeah, it is. Like, it's totally mm -hmm. fine. That's what got us to where we're at, you know? That's why we're successful right. everything, you know? It's it's because we've disagreed along the way, and that's fine, you know? Oh, yeah. so, anyways, uh, but no, I agree. The TikTok, I know, especially over here on, like, the Dude Network, it's just a happy place. It's your own happy place. It, no matter what you like or do, like, it, you like your videos, it starts giving you more videos like that. And next thing you know, you have a nonstop stream of happiness, you know, uh, catered exactly to you. So, no, whoever came up with this concept was absolutely amazing. Yes. But, um, so, you, okay, now we talked into why you're, why you're here, how you got here, what, what motivates you, um, you know, a lot of your good Samaritan things, um, that you, you've done and will continue doing and have inspired me to do, uh, hey. you are the barbecue guy. So let's talk yeah. some barbecue, man. Like let's, oh, let's, talk, let's talk meat. I think, I'm about, I think I'm about to get exposed here. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, we're talking meat. Yeah, so, let's go. What is your style of barbecue, Mo? I don't have one. I'm not going to lie. I don't have one. I'm interested in trying everything and failing at everything. Cause if I don't fail, I don't get better. Yeah. So Texas, I started with Texas cause that's the most common. You go, you go to Texas to get barbecue. That's, that's, that's what it was. I started doing Texas. 
I'm interested in, I've done a little Memphis, done, done a little bit of Carolina, done a little bit of Kansas City. I have dabbled in everything. But the being a master of one, none. Because why limit myself to one style? Why does anybody limit themselves to one style? I, I agree. I agree completely. Is there one style that's absolutely kicked your ass? Um, I want to say, and this is coming from the heart because uh, Memphis. I'm just going to say Memphis. Why is that? Carolina, I can get. Uh, Memphis is, is is so varied. It's it's If you really look at it, it is a very sweet, smoky, but it's got a tang to it. Very. It, this is this is me personally. Maybe I don't have the best palate in the world. Maybe somebody will correct me. That's fine. But to me, Memphis has that the vinegar tang, the Texas bite. I want to say I want to just, and it's got its own little sweetness to it. That's that's the best way I can describe it because it's there's so much involved with it. Now Texas is all of them are very complicated in their own way. Texas is not very not as straightforward because you're you hear Texas oh salt and pepper and uh, use this wood. No, it's it's a lot more. It's a lot deeper than that. And having trying to narrow it down to one one little area is just you're just setting yourself up to be the same thing over and over again. Yeah, when, I, what just, when what just happens when I just do when I throw this in there? What happens when I put this flavor in there and see? Just you know, who knows what you're going to come up with? I tell you, I this stuff you, didn't happen in someone's basement overnight. You know, it's going to be a, a sloppy ass mess if you and I get in the same kitchen. Because if I had to say my style, oh. I think not. Uh, smoked meat Texas style. All right. But no, I, oh, I yeah. agree, man. If, uh, cause I'm the same way I do a fusion. If you look back on the couple, I did a Carrizo casserole. It was screaming yep. Santa Fe, like Southwestern, yep. but it's like, Oh, let's put on layer potatoes, you know, which is like yeah. Northeast, you know, you know, it's Midwest, you know, like heart, uh, nor, you know, any, the potatoes is like a Northern thing. So, uh, yeah, definitely. But, um, no, so I'm with you. So the Memphis, so you're, we're ter- you're throwing around a lot of uh, you're like Texas bite all this. So let's 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 slow things down a little bit and actually go back to the basics because there are some people that don't really know the differences. It seems like you've done a lot of well-rounded research on the different styles. Break everyone down the different regions of barbecue and kind of what makes them unique to that region. Texas to me, very bold, very in your face, flavorful. It's really got a punch to it. And it's, wow, this is really hard to describe. I didn't think it would be, but it is. <sighs> Texas, Texas to me is very straightforward. Cause like with the, I, and I have my rule. If I have a choice brisket, I can do whatever the heck I want to it. If I have a prime brisket, I am going to salt, pepper, garlic, that thing. That's it. That's, that's the way I was taught how to do it. That's the way I've seen how to do it. And that's the way I'm continuing. Maybe I'll, maybe one day my, my, Income will be a little better, and I can buy prime brisket and screw around with it. Buy a wagyu brisket, screw around with it. Um, there's that one. So that for me is very straightforward, in your face, nice little punch. But in as basic as it is, it can be terrific. Um, Memphis, I have a soft spot for Memphis because my wife lived in Memphis for years, for a few years, and so did well her family did. Um, when she was uh, younger. So I'm like, you know, and the thing is, I've had what they call Memphis and other places, chains and whatnot. And I don't know if it is Memphis. We've never stopped in Memphis to try. So here I am buying these Memphis rubs from Kroger, not knowing any better. Like, oh, this is Memphis on. It should be good. But then I've had people tell me this isn't Memphis. No, it's unique. So I'm curious to find it, but I, I kind of want to go up there to see it, you know? Um, I want to say the most, the the most I can find is if Carolina barbecue. That's yes, easiest to find here in Georgia for me. Um, saucy, got that, or thin sauce mops it, mop it all, and it's got that. Uh, I want to. I don't even know how to describe North Carolina, but it's by far the easiest one to find here in Georgia. But. My wife and I, and she just said it right here in my chat, is we have this plan. We want to go to all these different places and really get into them locally. Not your chains, not the ones that made it across the U.S. We want to go to some hole-in-the-wall dirt hole that has friggin' skulls of bulls hanging on the wall. That's where we want to go. I, it's her, so I don't specific. want to go to these chains. So specific. Yeah, I, I, want to go to, I want to go to a place where, they, where you see some dust on a deer head in the wall or something you know, like that. 
Yeah. I don't want to go to these places where it's all clean and prim and proper. Hey, let's have some barbecue. You see somebody on the corner eating with a fork and knife. I don't want to see that. No, come on. <laughs> no, I, I'm with you. So is there a, a an ultimate barbecue destination that you want to go to? Like, is it Violet's? You know, is it, you know, hmm. it, is there like. I want to say Snow's Barbecue in Texas. Okay. Snow's Barbecue, Texas. Why? Yes. And if she or Tootsie is the is the, is the artist I call her, she's uh, she was on Netflix. She had her own uh, episode of Netflix, uh, the Chef's Table Barbecue, I believe. Okay. And I'm being told that I need to go to Mississippi. I got I got friends in Mississippi, so or I got family in Mississippi, so I don't mind going over there. Um, but Snow's Barbecue in Texas, Tootsie, who is who makes these briskets and these ribs and all this stuff. She works at a school as a custodian, and Friday, I believe Friday evening, she goes to this place and starts cooking all night. And I'm talking about brisket that is just oozing juice, and people line up at like starting at six, seven, eight in the morning just to get some. And it doesn't look like nothing but but a shack with an overhang with some tables under it. It's like nothing. Uh, Gordon Ramsay's been there. Um, you know, they did a whole special about it, but yeah, that would be where I would stop right there. Okay. And that's not to say I don't want to go to Mississippi or Louisiana. And, you know, I, I know Louisiana, ha- Louisiana has its own twist. I've never, I'm not a spicy guy because of the esophagus issues I've had in the past, but I would try it just to suffer with it for a day. <laughs> say I did. Cook it outside said, tell him Choke Canyon Barbecue on I-37 in South Texas. I'm not the right. I don't have a pen. I got it wrote <laughs> down. I can. Okay, cool. I, can get I appreciate it. I got you. I did not prepare. I did not prepare for responses. Come on, Rook. Always have a pad of paper and a pen. But actually, technically, that's my job. So I guess <laughs> you're just supposed to be there and chill out. So, right. <laughs> are you drinking are you, any cervezas on this Friday? Can we show that now? Yeah. Because apparently, I heard about people getting banned about it. Oh, really? I don't yeah, know. I heard earlier that somebody's like, "Oh, yeah, I showed, I showed, I showed my beer," and I've seen like three videos today saying, "Oh, look, TikTok, here's a beer." Ooh, like then I found out somebody was getting banned for it. I'm like, Dang. "Oh, okay." That's uh-huh. why I have this guy, uh, Delta Airlines, who my dad works for. <laughs> it's actually my daughter's cup. I'm just borrowing it. Hmm. Cheers. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I would have got banned a long time ago, so I hope that's not the case. <laughs> Go back and look at any of my videos in the in the past, like three months. <laughs> that's kind of like, I remember like the first time I got to a thousand followers, I went live. I said, I'm going live and I'm drinking beers. We're celebrating. And, and we sat around and, uh, cheers, cook it. Yeah. I have tons of mouths on the wall. He thought your mouths on the wall comment was pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> so... Big Mini, yes, I am being interviewed, sir. Yes, yes, and he's not. Yeah, we've become such good buddies that like it's not. It's not. It's not one of my better, well structured interviews. But there have been questions and there have been answers. So someone was on here and said, "Let's talk chicken wings. Favorite way, not fried. Favorite sauce for a wing. And are you a drumstick guy or a wing guy? This tells a lot about a person. I don't have a preference for the type." Because I can find good qualities and all. I like the I like the drumsticks because of simplicity, but I like the flats because they get a, some of them tend to be a little meatier. Some of them do. And that's not all that's not all encompassing. Some of them do because they got that extra little meat in the middle. But sometimes you'll get yourself a drumstick that's like a fat boy. Like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, you bite into it, you just clean off. But I I I, I don't really have a preference in either one of them. Okay. All right. Well, um, sauce. Mo has co- Mo gives cop out answers. That's oh, there you go. That's my note. Well, I mean, I can't choose. I mean, I want to choose, but I'm like, man, which one do I like? Because I've, I've had because even though I can I can I can uh, counter that, I've had bad drumsticks. I've had bad flats. I've had a flat come clean off, and it feels completely wasted, dry in the middle. Okay. I've had drumsticks that are just that, like crumble because they're so dry, or they have too much fat, or that they got tendons still sticking in them. Right. So I mean, yeah, I got to cop out the answer because honestly, I don't have a problem with either one of them. <laughs> okay, I'm a drumstick guy. Oh, nice. I like I like the I like the easiness. Uh, yeah, and it's normally got a lot of meat, you know, more meat on it because I'm I'm a meat guy. 
Um, so what's your favorite kind of sauce to put or rub to put on wings? Lemon garlic Ooh. all day long. You're not a spicy and, guy. You said you can't have the no. spice. So, I, I can if I am ready to just choke down a whole bunch of Tums behind it. Yeah, I usually pay for that one pretty quick. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The lemon garlic would be good. I guess I haven't done... I, I hate to admit it, but I haven't done wings in a really long time because I have so much meat in the freezer that's not expensive wings that I just cook it instead. Yeah. I mean, I do venison. I mean, I shoot two deer a year. I get a whole hog butchered, and that's mainly our meat source. And I fish, and then I, I get walleye from Lake Erie. So I bring walleye. Oh, walleye. Or, yeah. Or, or, you just uh, reminded me of being a kid. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best though. The worst one of flat bone cracks. Yes. <laughs> oh jeez. I went. You know, me and my dad used to fish for walleye out in Washington State when I was a kid. Okay. Yeah. And we then we had those rivers of rainbow trout. Those were so cool. See, I like rainbow those. trout. A lot of people hate trout. A lot of people hate eating trout. But man, I'm telling you, do you, I mean, I don't know how you make them, but I bake mine. I cut the fillets. I fillet it because you don't have to scale it because it's basically skin, and then you. Um, I boil it, I put it face, you know, skin down, bake yeah. it with, and I leave lemons on top of it and with pepper and some minced garlic yeah. and a little bit of butter. And then it just cooks, uh, cooks it all up. And I mean, and I pull yeah. it out and it's delicious. It comes right off. It's amazing. Well, I hate to be that guy, but I, the only fish I've ever done on the griddle grill or anything is, is salmon. And it was pre-cut salmon I got from Costco because I'm still experimenting. Um, However, I'm not against trying it. I just haven't had to. I've never. I've only skinned a fish once or twice in my life. Okay. I want to get. I want to get good at it. Um, however, I need to get my butt out out of work long enough to go to the lake and catch something, <laughs> which is on the docket because I need to get. I need to get a, a kayak or something because here in Georgia it gets so hot during the spring and summer they they automatically go out to the middle and they go down where it's cool. Yeah. So it's like it makes it really difficult. Oh, I don't have a kayak or a boat. I have to fish from the shore crap yeah so i've lost i've lost so many lures in this lake that's right down the road here i mean i think i bought like i want to say i bought like 90 bucks worth of good lures and said i lost three of them day one i'm like you know what i'm gonna wait till i have a kayak or something this is crap okay i uh i guess i didn't really give you my answer for my favorite sauce on a wing yes and that yes, would we need to hear that i probably would have to say because everyone got real excited about the wings and i'm like damn i never said what my response was um yeah i want to go with like a uh like a like a sweet chili a chili sauce like a sweet chili sauce Ooh. like an asian like Ooh. at quake at uh, buffalo wild wings they call it like asian zing but like yeah. it's you know not that but like something that's like a, a little sweet with a little bit of a a, a bite to it at the at the end kind of like the sauce i made the other night so i got one for you then there okay. is a Local local wing place down the road. Uh, my wife was gonna have to type it in right here. I don't remember what it's called, but they have this, this flavor called hotiyaki, teriyaki wings, but it's got a hot bite to it. Ooh, yeah, hot and yaki. Buffalo. No, it's hot. Yeah, hotiyaki is what it's called. Beth, I am not. I'm, I'm not remembering the uh, name of the place. If you could possibly put it in the chat, that'd be very helpful. Wings and things. That's it. We have two wings and things that exist, one here and one down the road in the next town over. Um, local place, but thing called Hadiyaki, it's teriyaki wings, but they got a little they got that spice still. Kind of kind of what you're reminds of what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, that that sounds like it would be something right up my alley. Mm -hmm. Kick it outside, said Mo, you come on down here whenever you want and I'll take you fishing. Catfish eats good, and he ain't lying. Yes, they do. I remember catfish in Arkansas. We uh, we were I was stationed over there for four years. My daughter was born in Little Rock, and then yeah, the catfish ain't no joke. Okay. And apparently, frog legs aren't frog legs aren't either. But I didn't eat those. I didn't eat those. I wasn't ready for that. Frog legs are delicious. Uh, I, I'll take your word for it because I'm like I saw this and I'm like yeah I'm not ready. Uh, I'm not probably, I'll probably, I'll probably, I'd probably do it now. Be more. It, it took me a while though too, man. It really did. And then one day I just. I saw one land on a plate, and I was just like, I just grabbed it and ate it. And they're like, excuse you. And I'm like, sorry. I'm like, I'm just going for it. And I liked it. Yeah. But it still kind of freaks me out, though. It still kind of freaks me out. But um, Yeah, and the thing is, I don't know. If I, think, I think it's the shape, <laughs> honestly. 
Ooh, alligator yeah, told tail. Them all, wait, there are actually more wings and things around here. I didn't know that. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you ever have so, so doing awesome stuff here said alligator tail? He said so good. It is yeah. good. Have you ever had it? Yep. Never tried it, and I am open to it because it would make my wife mad because her family's are Gators fans. <laughs> so that makes me a Gator fan by association. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> but I tell you what, the 2017 Super Bowl was amusing because I'm a diehard Patriots fan. They're not. Oh yeah, yeah. No, that would do it. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> Don't. Girl, King, Girl King Houston. Hey man, what's going on, brother? Welcome. Hey, he came over. He did. Oh, even my, even my wife's in here is like, oh, I mentioned the Super Bowl. She's like, that is not cool. <laughs> no, it's not cool. Oh, come on, man. Don't let the dude sessions oh, interview get she you in the doghouse. Fan until 2017. <laughs> All right, so. You've kind of already talked about, like, you know, you are a foodie and you kind of do a bunch of just uh, different things. So, is that what makes your barbecue different? Or, I guess, what makes your barbecue different? What makes my barbecue different is actually my brain. Because oftentimes, I don't keep my fridge or anything or my pantry as stocked as I see some people. Some people got, like, buku flavors from all across the world and they got a bunch of vegetables always on hand and this stuff. I don't know how they do it. I don't know if they're paid to do it, but I see it and I'm like, oh well I don't have this. Well what could I do in place of that? Let's try this. And I'll do something on the side and mix it up. And I'm like, all right, let's see if this works. Oh, it's it's pretty good, but I can you could use this. Or oh that sucks. I'm throwing it away. Try it again. I will keep I will do that. You could ask my wife, I will do that for hours. I will start at like six in the morning. If I get something in my head that I want to achieve, I will get up at some stupid hour. I've even gotten up at three, four in the morning and gotten them to start doing stuff just because I want to, Hey, I wonder, I'll wake myself. Do you think these two combinations of flavors work or more? Let's go try. And she goes, it's like two in the morning. I'm like, I know, but I got an idea. <laughs> I can't explain it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, 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 us, us dudes, we be like that sometimes, they say. It, it don't always be like that, but it do. Yeah. Um, what has been your favorite TikTok food video that you have done? I mean, you've had uh, the reverse chicken parm that you did that was awesome. Um, your stuffed burgers looked like it was off the chains, off just a couple examples. So uh, what's been your favorite one you've put together so far? The smoked cheese, hands down. Smoked cheese? Not because not because it was my most complicated. It was because it was my easiest. Not, I do that because is not everybody likes smoked cheese. I get it. It happens. You know, not everybody's got different tastes, whatnot. But it is so easy to do. And actually, before earlier today, before my wife called me and told me the car was ready, I was working on follow up videos. I was I was uh, showing people the different ways to do smoked cheese. Which was the example in my video, I used my smoke tube, well, the bigger one, not this one. But, you know, the one thing is, what do you do with a person who may have a, have a grill, but no, you know, n they don't usually use wood, they use coals. Well, you can get those bags of, chip, bags of chips from the store, right? Well, I don't have a smoke tube. I don't have a smoke maze. I don't, you know, have a need for pellets. Aluminum foil. This thing is packed with pellets. This will give you 30 minutes of smoke. And anybody can do it. You throw it on your grill. Don't don't put any coals. You put enough coal, put like two coals under there. Light them up. Get them going. This thing will smolder for half an hour. And the reason that's the reason I like it so much because it's so easy to do and it can change the entire profile of a piece of cheese and change an entire meal. We have put mozzarella cheese on chicken broccoli. Uh, we started doing it on and other other things like the 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 um par, the reverse parm. We did it on that one. We did that. We did that with plain cheese, mozzarella, and then smoked Parmesan, smoked mozzarella. That changes everything. So if you put cheddar cheese, excuse me, cheddar cheese on something, try it smoked. See what you think. You can do it on anything you put regular cheese on. Okay. So by far, that one is my favorite. So again, just to make sure that everybody understands it right, to do the smoked cheese, you get your little blocks mm -hmm. of cheese, and everyone check out his video on there. Um, it's the one with a lot of views. It's a three-parter. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's all right. Hey, you're one of those guys, but that's cool. You know, I'm joking. 
<laughs> I hate. I, 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 I promise. Was, was funny. I, I promise. Was I never do three video. parts. Was the thing? It's like I when I saw that I saw that video. I'm like, crap! I, I can't do this in a minute. It's not. I, no matter how much I edited, no matter how much I cut, I couldn't get it down to a minute. Like, All right. You know what? I'm just going to make this a multi part. Now, the one thing I can't stand is when you get those guys at the multi part. Oh, I found a safe in my house. Tune in, uh, share, and subscribe for part two. Get a crowbar, you lazy freak. Come on. No. So I, I literally drafted every video and deployed them back to back. So nobody, and I told her, I said at the end of the video, hey, I'm going to do a part two, but it's coming right behind this one. So I made sure they were up immediately and I didn't make people wait. That's I hate that's ridiculous. Oh, I know. It's a stupid baby tactic. There's there's some, and there's some that like it's like ne they never did a part two. Yeah, and I'm just like, well, what? Ma on. What? What makes you think I'm going to follow your channel? Like, I I want to like right. if there's a way I could block your channel, I would because <laughs> yeah, no kidding, you don't want to see that crap. No, and that's why and that's why I made sure I made the point. Hey, it's coming right behind this one. I'm not making anybody wait. So as soon as I uploaded the first one, I was already uploading the second one. So. so <laughs> So I guess on the cheese then, like I guess the point I was trying to get there was you basically, you don't fire up the grill. You just put it in a grill where it contains the smoke, and then you just light mm -hmm. one of those things for 30 minutes. And yeah, one of these little pouches will do it for you. Just, it's just aluminum foil with pellets wrapped into it. That's it. And just put two hot coals in it. Just right on the bottom so they sit on it because they'll get hot and they'll smolder out. It'll okay. get the flavor. It'll keep the, it'll keep the heat contained in this area. You ain't gonna worry about melting your cheese. That's awesome. I thought it was. <laughs> uh, Grill King Houston. So I need to do a part two that never comes. Ha ha. J K. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Then, get uh, off. Here's a good question <laughs> from uh, Ryan Wright one four one five. What's up, mm -hmm. neighbor? <laughs> He goes, <laughs> yeah, uh, but he has a good question because I I've never even got to do this. Have you ever smoked a prime rib roast? Yes, and in fact, we did it. We did it. Uh, and what's the key to that? What's the key to smoking a good one? Well, obviously, you need to get the internal temperature close, not at, not at, close. You get the internal temperature so, like I think within ten degrees or ten fifteen degrees, and you sear the mess out of it. Because you're going to get that smoky flavor and you're going to get that nice crust right in the outside. Now, the difference between a regular primary roast and the one I did, I aged that thing for 45 days. Oh, nice. Using, and call it what you will. It's not real dry aging. Yeah, I know you got to go get, go get one of those things. You hang it up for, yeah, I get it. However, I don't have that option because those things cost like three grand. I don't have three grand sitting around. If I had three grand sitting around, I'd be doing, I wouldn't be buying a dry aging refrigerator i got one of those 30 dollar bag sets from dryagingbags.com shove that thing in there seal it the best i could and put it out my uh my, my garage fridge for 45 days that's literally it you can call it what you want but we got out and that was the best thing i've ever had in my damn life there you <laughs> go. no absolutely that sounds like uh, 45 days man that's really something um yeah so it sounds like the key to it is a good sear so when you get done Absolutely. doing like your like um, you know grill oven smoke or whatever, the key is to at the end. And what and for those watching that don't really know, uh, like searing is like how you it's like caught, same as cauterizing an artery. You know, you basically yeah, just sit, it. sear the outside to where it closes all the pores and the crisp, and no juices can escape. So that that's what that. Um, well, I would in in a case of a steak, juices will escape, but it won't be as dramatic as not doing it. Uh, cook outside said he put it in the beer fridge. <laughs> See, there you go. The trick is with dry aging, if you put it in those bags, especially the bags breathe, they let air out, but they don't let anything back in. I don't know what the technology is behind it. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. But you got to make sure, yeah, you got to make sure it's not touching, it's touching as little surface area as possible. Like I put mine on a wire dry or wire cooling rack in the fridge, and that did the trick. It's, it's just minimizing the contact surface area so you don't let it get rotting or whatever. Now you got to make sure the bag is sealed, or else that thing will have mold on it. You don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, that, that's superb, man. So you not oh, yeah. only done it, you did it like the 
like the most dude way possible. Like I want to hang it, dry age it. I'm going to tent. Oh, I want for, to do it so bad. I just, I just can't <laughs> tent, tent myself for 45 days with a hanging slice of deliciousness in my beer fridge oh, yeah. in the garage. And I can't get to it. Yet. <laughs> and, that, and that's, what's great about it too. It's like, cause me, I, my brain is, I will do that and I'll forget about it. And then all of a sudden one day my phone goes off. Oh yeah. Your dry aging meets ready. I'm like, Oh, Babe, look what we're having for dinner tomorrow night. And she hates, I know she hates when they do that. Because it's like, babe, we're having this tomorrow night. And she's like, oh, we got to go buy stuff. Okay. All right. We'll do it, dear. And she's so <laughs> nice to me. <laughs> we don't deserve our wives half the time, right? No, we don't. We really don't. She's put up with a lot of my crap in the past year because it's not just, you know, oh, the, the job and then, you know, doing smoking. It's been, I've been living here for a year and change. I have not left my job has been here. My editing has been here. My TikToks have all been here. Say for maybe one or two I did while I was at the market or something. Everything has been centered around this room or this house. Nice. Love it. Uh, speaking, someone hopped on and uh, heard about the smoked cheese talk. And have you ever done the smoked mac and cheese? And I'm going to assume that you have. What's your best way of doing smoked mac and cheese? I did it quite a while ago, and I've been messing around with it. I have actually have more macaroni in, in the closet right now, waiting for me to do it. Now, <laughs> I will say, I want to preface by saying the stunt food you see on TikTok of the people that pour dry macaroni and put milk in it, don't ever do that. <laughs> his don't brain, do that. don't do it, folks. It hurts his brain. <sighs> Cook the damn macaroni first. <laughs> And make sure and if you're gonna if you're gonna put meat in, in a pie, cook the meat first. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, you'll if you go through some of my past videos where I've reacted to like cursed, I call them cursed food videos. Yeah, you you see that she, this literally this lady made a pie with meat in it, and she took it out. And it was raw right in the middle. I'm like, nope, mm -mm, nope. But yes, the first time I did it, I cooked with the macaroni, put a. I, did, I put like a bunch of cheese, the, the, the cheese that came in the pack. I, took, I put the Velveeta in there. I put all this on there. And I did lobster and blue crab. Oh my gosh. Gucci. And, you did Gucci mac and cheese. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, I, talk, cause I I woke up one day and said, babe, I wonder if this will work. Can we make it happen? I'll go to the meat, I'll go to the seafood market down the road that just opened and I'll get some stuff. Okay. Did that, did the cheese. Did, I even put smoked cheese on it. Over on the top, mixed it all. Excuse me, mixed it all in, smoked it up, did it. In my old master built propane out there. Like four or five hours later, money. We ate on that thing for four days straight until oh. we were like, "Yeah, you know what? It's probably gonna go bad. We need to toss it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, when you have a five, my split. wife just came in here and said, "Best best mac and cheese ever." That means we need to do it again, or she's gonna divorce me. <laughs> jalapenos, okay, jalapenos. Yeah, he 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 doesn't do the yep. spicy. But yeah, jalapenos would be a nice. I will uh, try it. Nice. I will try. It. I just won't go crazy with it. <laughs> I'm definitely making a Gucci mac and cheese TikTok now. Please, please, please. <laughs> Girl King Houston, y'all know I went vegan for a week. Meat market must have been shut down. Guy was on vacation. That's what that must have been. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing, you know. And I'm, and I'm 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 all for the people doing what doing what they like and. You know, I don't have a problem with the vegans or vegetarians. Mm. What you do is completely cool. That is your business. Yeah, you absolutely. And I, I was channel. obviously joking, everybody. I would. Yeah, uh, no, I, no, good I, for I, you. You're going to live a lot longer life than us that live off meat. I can promise you that. Well, that's not necessarily true, especially if new research proves otherwise. But that's not that's not for me to decide. <laughs> Personally, for me, I have no problem with you being vegan, vegetarian, whatever. Just don't come over to me and push it on me and call me a murderer because I choose to eat something. That's ridiculous. Come on. Let's let's grow up here, guys. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, so, all right. We were talking about the, the – so what's the best cheese that you used? Like, was there any kind – was it – since you do the lobster mac, have you done any, like, Briere or some Lumberger? Or some <laughs> lumber, no, or some mozzarella brie? balls, yeah, and, yeah, brie, yeah, like farmer's cheese, goat cheese. I mean, what what's the best cheese, man? I honestly, the best cheese is a mix that I that I make occasionally for burgers. It is a brie mixed with an asiago, and it gives you it gives you a slight tang of it, 
you mix, you, you put it in a, it's a saucepan, you melt it, melt the brie up, put the Asiago in there. And apparently it's the same, it's a similar kind of cheese that you get at these high dollar place restaurants where you can get these buggers, as they call them. Uh, they're just buggers. Mm, yeah, no, but it's, it's supposedly a high dollar way of mixing the cheese. And I'm like, that's really, I, I looked at, I looked at it I'm like, that's really stupid, easy to do. I'm going to do it. I mean, you go to Aldi, if you have an Aldi in your area, go, because all that cheese I get, yes, all that cheese I get, kid you not, less than a dollar fifty a block. <laughs> so if I were to turn around and sell that, sell that eight ounces for like $3 or three, four dollars a block, I am, I could make a profit like you wouldn't believe. I haven't done it yet because I got to get inspected by people. On, yeah, on yeah you need a whole kitchen, a commercial kitchen, the plastic walls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But one day. Yeah, I'm not interested. Hey. End game, end game. Um, that's end a good. Game. That's a good. That's a good question, Ryan. On the mac and cheese temperature, low and slow around two twenty five, or no? Two fifty. Two fifty. Two fifty. Two fifty. Thank you. All right. Uh, so we have talked mac and cheese. So is that your ultimate side dish on the, on in barbecue? Yes, because that's one of the few side dishes I, I target in barbecue. There is a unspoken agreement in my house where my wife and my daughter handled the side dishes while I was outside smoking. Yeah. That was before the, that was before the black stump <laughs> because, and, and I'm not dogging my daughter here. I love her to death, but she has a tendency of getting that phone and forgetting. Oh yeah. It happens. It happens. So things get burned. I love her. I do. Kaylee, I love you. And I'm sorry. I don't mean to sell you out, but it's happened because she makes these killer green beans. I don't know. I gave her the basics for green beans, right? These fresh green beans, you got to pop the ends of them and everything. I don't like the canned stuff. It doesn't taste good to me. Beth, be nice to our daughter. Can I have a beer, please? <laughs> she <laughs> says she burns things all the time. <laughs> um, so, uh, <laughs> so she, uh, I gave her the basics. Okay, here's these green beans. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to put salt and pepper on them, a little bit of oil, but then I want you to go nuts. Show me what you got. Don't overdo it, but go nuts. And it was back when we were doing, uh, she was auditioning for MasterChef Junior. I was showing her how to make a fried pork chop. We uh, And we did. And the pork chop, oh, man, that was been a couple of years now, but they were perfectly golden brown. No scoring, no, no, like, not even the bone. There was no, like, black burn on the bone, nothing. They were perfect all the way through. We took the temperature, everything. Beautiful. To answer Big Minnie's question, we don't do beans because my wife was on keto. Ah, she don't do beans. Yeah, that's so that's we, not that's not yeah. friendly for that. No, um, but that's okay. We have, I mean, I do miss the baked beans, but that's not the point. But she came up with this. Ball, she started adding other things, um, a little bit of garlic, salt. Then she added balsamic vinaigrette, and I was thinking, that ain't gonna work. That can't work, can it? <laughs> and she was actually very subtle about it. And it mixed in, and she got, and she kept paying attention. She was stirring it around, stirring it around, and we tried it, and she had the perfect balance of crunch, sweet, and that tart, that balsamic vinegar was sitting right there. And I'm like, if anything gets you into this competition, that would be it, because I'm, I, I, they were unforgettable. And to this day, I say you need to make the green beans because I love them, and I, I am not a green bean guy. I hate green beans, but she made that one time, and it blew me away. And there's been times she's done it again that she's overdone the, overdone the vinegar or she's tried something different and it got overkill. It was still good. It just was too much. So I would say my favorite side would be those green beans. Okay. Um, I'm starting to get brisket questions over here. Are you ready? Because, I mean, okay. that's the only thing people worry about in the world of barbecue is brisket. Ooh. Yeah, that and, that and pork shoulder or pork butt. <laughs> All right, so here's questions from Team Crazy Country B. Okay, okay, so wrap brisket or unwrap, fat side up or fat side down, and SPG or multiple seasoning. And then so do you rest for two hours or 11 hours, like Franklin's <laughs> Barbecue? Uh, I see where he's going. First of all, wrap, peach paper, every single time. I do not do foil unless I'm trying to break down the bark. I'm not trying to break down the bark. I've done foil once. A guy from Texas threatened to come kill me, and it wasn't big old Texan, and I believed him, so I never did it again. <laughs> uh, nothing against wrapping in foil. Some people prefer it. I am a peach paper guy, and 
that's where I evolved into putting be uh, beef towel on my peach paper, which actually will absorb into that muscle tissue. For fat, fat side down. Now, I'm not telling anybody, like again, none of these answers I'm giving are telling you what to do. If you do it your way and it works, do it your way. But fat side down for me. The common myth I found is that people believe that fat will render and soak into the meat. Will it? You're going to get a piece of fat that is like liquid soaking into a dense piece of tough meat. Personally, I don't think so. Fat side down because you're protecting that. You want, the, you want, I'm sorry, not fat side down necessarily. You want fat side toward the heat. So if you're on a stick burner and it's going over, you want the fat side to face that heat. If you got a, an offset like mine where the heat's coming up from behind it or beneath it, you want it fat side down. You want to protect that meat. If the fat renders off and drips down, let it drip down. Because when you're hosing it every hour and you go to wrap it and you put that beef tallow in there, guess what? You're just trapping everything in there nice and tight. And it's just doing its thing and steaming in that bag. Okay, that's fair. Uh, he or said, rubs. <laughs> it's Crazy ahead. Country Barbecue is who that aunt asked that question. Yes, and I follow him too and he follows me. He's a, Instagram he's buddies. He he seems like he seems like a, he seems like a fair guy, so okay. Yeah, there, now there's talk on tomahawk here. Ryan asked tomahawk. One guy said, "Is it worth it? Or are you paying for the bone?" One guy said, "Hey, go with the ribeye." Crazy country saying tomahawk is worth it. Get it from Sam's. So what Bingo. is your opinion, tomahawk, or is it worth it or not worth it? Absolutely worth it. Absolutely worth it. You know how I know that because I've never never been able to find one. Okay. Not here. The reason is, is because I am a big fan of the reverse sear method. And I've had a piece of someone's tomahawk when I was hunting last year. And I said, hey, how the reverse sear turn out? He, he cut a fucking chuck off and gave it to me. He's like, here you go. Give it a shot. And oh, my God. I about wanted to fall over dead right there. I was like, you know what? I'm good. I can die happy right now. <laughs> and, he, and he explained it. He's actually a big barbecue, too. And he explained to me, he's like, you want the bone there because it, it – that's it can it helps retain your, that flavoring right next to it. So even with a T bone or a porterhouse, you get next to that bone. That's where all your flavor's gone because now it's stuck to the bone and it's gotten in the, infected the meat all around it. Infected was a very bad word, <laughs> but it consumes the meat all around it. So the closer you get to that bone, the more flavor you are getting punching the taste buds with. Okay, I mean uh, that, that's awesome. Yeah. About, oh yeah, I didn't answer the uh, the uh, rub question. Um, like I mentioned earlier, if it's a choice brisket, I will do whatever the heck I want with it. I will screw around with it. If it's a prime brisket and I'm paying like eighty bucks for a brisket, guess what? I'm doing SPG on that piece. That's it. <laughs> Nothing else. Break I down, am not taking my chances. Break down SPG for people that don't know what SPG means. What is, what's the that would be for? a salt, salt, pepper, and garlic. Okay. And it's really easy to make because um, you'll see these ones that. Sell at Walmart SPG, and it's like a, it's like in a can this big, something like that, and they're charging four bucks for it. Honestly, you go pay twelve bucks or tw oh no, twelve twenty bucks, you can get the a big thing of gar or garlic or granulated garlic, big thing of pepper, and you can get a thing for a Morton's uh, kosher salt for like three bucks. And guess what? You got like four reloads of of a perfect one 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 SPG mix all day long. You don't need anything else. Okay. Because every time, if when we run out here, my wife and my daughter are like, hey, we're out of SPG. Can you mix up some more? Yes, well, I can. And that's where the stores get you. I mean, you can make half the stuff, you know. I mean, you can. Like, they charge you for taco seasoning, you know, for a dollar a pack. Or you could get, yeah. like, five different spices and make, like, 30 packs, you know, for, yeah. for half we'll the figure, right? But, I mean, now, don't now, get wrong. It, it's I convenient. It it's convenient. It is. It's convenient. That's what it is. Yeah. There's convenient prices for convenient things. Yes. Okay, so um, beer can chicken. I uh, give me a rundown on beer can chicken. Ryan says, "Have you ever done that?" Yes, I've done it several times. In fact, this is a hit in our house. Um, I, ha I actually have a setup where you put the beer can right in the middle, and the it's got these braces that come up and hold the chicken in place. And I've done it with. I don't think I've ever made a bad one, according to other people's opinions. I. I always think, because I'm, I'm that guy after word after cook, I'm like, I could have done this better. I could have done that better. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. I forgot this, forgot that. I'm that guy. But everybody's like, oh, no, it's amazing. It's amazing. Do it again. Do it again. And I'm like, oh, 
Okay. Me being the perfectionist, like, oh, it's terrible. <laughs> Man, there's people who are saying they use it with Pepsi. A uh, girl King Houston says he does with Dr. Pepper and Pepsi. I've heard of that. Yeah, and now, uh, yeah, everyone's like asking him now, like, "Hey, man, like, I need that recipe for that Dr. Pepper." Yeah, how? Yeah, long, no kidding. How long does it take to? Uh, Ryan wants to know how long does it take to do a beer can chicken? I do not go by time. I never go by time. Temp. It's always internal temperature. Yep. So an internal temperature of cooked chicken is. I don't have to Google in front of me. <laughs> okay. I don't know either. No, I, I was hoping it, you would I, know. It's it like one seventy five. One seventy five. Is that is that it? I want to say it's one seventy one sixty five to one seventy five. I want to say, uh, I'm probably wrong because I I I have a I'm terrible at re- remembering these stupid things. I, I have a chart that I keep saving my phone, and now my wife's saying, "Let's try Dr Pepper this weekend." Oh, okay, here we go. Um, but I got I got a chart to save my phone. And I also got a chart outside stationed outside so I can reference uh, reference it. But I but the problem with that chart is I have writing on it because i'm like no this is usda this temp should be it and you know so i i try to modify but i'm also trying to not make my family sick so <laughs> it's kind of a catch 22 there uh cook it outside says 165 to 175 depending on how much of a yep. man you are <laughs> <laughs> well consider i don't want to kill my family i'm gonna stick with the 175 yeah yeah that. i was like i'm pull, getting some 165 like 167 but... and call it good it seems like yeah <laughs> With me having an 18 month and a three year old, the 175 seems a little bit more attractive to me. Um, Big mini over here is cherry Dr Pepper on ham. Ooh, cherry Dr Pepper on yeah. ham. Yeah, I, I believe that. I believe it. I can believe. I can believe it. Yeah, that, that um, makes sense. When I've done goose breast, I've marinated it in um, Coca Cola for 24 hours, and then I dumped mm-hmm. the Coke, and then I re added another can of Coke and did it another 24 hours, and then yeah. Uh, and so I've used I've used Coke as like a very aggressive meat tenderizer, and it yes. literally pulls every bit of gaminess out of something like goose breast. Right. So, but uh, what about pineapple? You tried that one? Pineapple juice on goose breast? On anything? Steak? Get it? You get a you get a choice steak. <laughs> Let it marinate and sucker overnight. See what happens because that's that pineapple juice will break that thing down fast. That's a, is that so? Is that one of your secrets? No, that's something I actually saw on YouTube oh. uh, about a year ago. It was uh, Google Google Foods is where I got it from because he he was doing the experiment. I'm watching. I'm like, there's no way this works. There's no way this works. He pours on a steak, lets it sit overnight, and says, "Oh, look what I did!" And then you could just see the way he was cutting it, like effortless, effortless all the way through. I'm like, no way. That's crazy. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> that is a wild. That is a wild thing. That's a very wild thing. It much is. Um, so, since you've been studying the food, I'm assuming that's not the weirdest, coolest thing that you've come across. What would no. probably be like the one thing that you found out and you're like, no way this is that good. Like, <laughs> so what's the, what's been the craziest surprise to the best in uh, your barbecue studies? Butter aged. Butter aged. Uh, butter aged meats break that they down. literally coat they they coat the thing with butter creates a crust of butter and it ages inside of it i kind of knew it would work looking at it from a logical standpoint but i'm like well what is the what can the butter possibly do when it's in a like a solid state it just sits there right and it wasn't even and i would say that has to top the weird factor for me because i would think that once you cool butter down enough to where it sits in a cell, it doesn't do anything. But it does. Little did I know. And right there next to it would be using mayo as a binder. Because anybody who's even beginner in um, a beginner in barbecue, you use mustard for a binder. That's yeah. generally what you see. Mm-hmm. Everybody sees it. Well, we use mustard for a binder. We use mustard. Okay, I, you know, I, I do it. The guy. Yeah, I've done it too. And of course, I got I got that one that one relative that's always like, oh, I don't like mustard, you know. Call him what you will. I mean, I don't care from. I'm not a big fan of mustard by any means, but mayo for a binder, mayonnaise. I discovered that literally a month and a half ago, and I'm 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 like pacing the brisket that's in my freezer right now to try it 
because everybody's like, oh, yeah, it changes everything. It's a game changer. And I'm like, that doesn't seem like it would work. But when you think about it, it's just eggs and fat. It could work. <laughs> but by far, that has been the weirdest one I've seen. I've seen sriracha. I've seen Tabasco uses the binder. Uh, I'm going to try it. It works. I- I'm going to try yeah. it. I'm going to try it. Yeah, so am I. As soon as I get the chance, I'm gonna pull out that brisket. I'm like you, we're gonna mail this thing. See what happens. Boy, you, boy, you, uh, boy, you've really got people fired up on the mayo comment. Good lord, what did you do? The mayo comment, really? Yeah. No, I've never done it before yet. I have, I have never done it yet. Oh, I, okay. I, I haven't seen it done. Uh, uh, Dicky yeah. Pate. Everyone's saying Dickie like Pate stick to the mustard here. or honey mustard. But now, cook it sides that mayo think... works well as a binder on fish. I've used it on redfish on 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 the half shell, so that's cool. Yeah. Um, if you guys want to check out where I learned the mayo thing from, Dickie Pate. He's right here on TikTok. He did a brisket video, and I like his style. He's good stuff. Um, he's got a lot of followers, too. And I saw him. He said, we're going to do a brisket for this. for, uh, for uh, I can't remember what the what the holiday was. But he was like, yeah, we're going to bind it with mayo. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? And that was a, that was when I heard about it. Like, what did you say? <laughs> and I, even I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Come on. Really? I thought he was joking. Like, no, he didn't. I'm like, okay, all right, let's let's see where this goes. Let's do it. Let's try it. Yeah. Hey, there's your TikTok. Hey, there's your next TikTok, man. Yeah. And then uh, what was it? I went to a live with Gary, the barbecue chef, and I'm like, the thing is, he does. He's not a fan of elitists. Like people that say, oh, you only cook with charcoal. You only cook with propane, or you're not right because you cook with a with a with a pellet smoker. And I'm like, no, it's not the. It's not the fuel. I've always been that guy. Like, you know, do what you got to do. Have whatever makes you comfortable. But he does not like elitists. He will attack elitists that go on his channel and say, you know, oh, real men cook with charcoal. I saw him do that video one time. Like, That's a nice hash- hashtag, douchebag. I'm like, whoa, okay. <laughs> and, you know, and, then, and I went to his live and I'm like, I wasn't trying to, I wasn't insulting the guy. I was like, hey, you know, just ask the question. Maybe he'd see it. Maybe he's got a lot of people, little followers, a lot of followers on his live. Like, hey, have you seen Mayo for Binder? Because uh, this is new to me. He's like, yeah, I've been seeing that floating around. I kind of want to try it myself. I'm like, okay, well, even him, as long as he's been here, didn't he you know, has never tried it. So, uh-oh. <laughs> Maybe I need to break that cycle. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm curious on that. So that's going to be something. So mayo is a binder. That's what we're going to have to. Yeah. We're going to have to keep that fault for the next time we have you on. We're going to have to talk about that. Uh, Girl King Houston has... I challenge mode to a friendly cook-off challenge. Uh oh. Well, Girl King, here the week after next when you hop on here. Um, I'm no, I'm doing a little. We with the car situation, we didn't get to do a, a stuffed burger challenge tonight, but we are doing that next time. It's official. Yep. It's we are mm-hmm. we're definitely going to uh, prepare, prepare something for the live session, and right. uh, hopefully, Girl King, that you. And I can do a head-to-head uh, show off. Now it's all about eye appeal, T- flavor. I'm just yep. going to tell you it's best, the best in the world. I don't care if it's bad or not. I'll be like, oh, that's right, mm, that's right. It's so the best good, ever. it's the Delicious. best. Hold on a second. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, have you ever torch seared anything? Yes, actually, I did last night. There I you did, go. Uh, I did that through the uh, the the uh, well, I, well, no, that, I'm sorry, not last night, night before, but I did my. Uh, my French dip. I torch seared that the uh, provolone right on the right on the meat because by the time we got around to doing the meat, the meat was cold or cooler. And I'm like, no, we're not doing that. I literally took this freaking torch and I went over it the provolone because I wanted the provolone to hold the meat on on the roll because the meat was in chunks and it was falling off. I'm like, you know, through that bump bump, <clears throat> did that just to get it to, to hold everything together and it worked. Um, but torch cheese on top of a uh, like a like something like that. I've done that before. So good. Because even if you don't smoke it, it's just melt to melt cheese unlocks the flavor. Now, as far as like the as far as like steaks and stuff, no, because I have a little baby friggin' kitchen torch that I got to keep refilling. Like it lasts for it lasts for like three or four minutes, and then I got a friggin' net. So that's not enough to sear a steak for me. So I want to get one of those flamethrowers that have the tank hanging in the bottom of it, and <laughs> done. So. So I'm trying to convince my, my wife to let me get a sous, a sous vide cooker. And so I cook them in there for a couple hours and pull them out and then just put them on the grill and just torch them. Done. 
<laughs> All right, so I guess it makes the difference. That was his next follow-up question to that. Uh, Girl King, I, um, we'll, we'll talk on the on the challenge there. Uh, we'll, we'll figure right. out something, brother. We'll definitely figure out something. We'll have fun with it for sure. We'll for sure. All right, can you give me thirty seconds here? I think my my family has forgotten about my um. My, my hydration. That's all right. I'll field some questions here from everybody. Justin, what's up, man? Welcome, welcome. Um, I know I got some comments here. I know I missed. Uh, Nailer, what's up, man? Go Browns. Thank you for stopping by. You're the best. Uh, Jesse, thank you for our uh, comp for participating as always um charcoal is overrated use wood strictly wood um i i agree with that um but sometimes the charcoal is just a little easier said... option uh, okay. okay and then mustard yeah we talked about that the fred fish was cool um it's cool that you were gone for a long time armadillo eggs i uh apparently i gotta learn about these armadillo eggs ryan keeps bringing really? armadillo eggs i don't know anything about them Jalapeno and their uh, can't remember what their stuff. Is. I had them once, and I paid for it, but it was worth it. I tell you what, we're going to be at the same party tomorrow. Okay. So let me let me see if I can maybe make some armadillo eggs for my good friend Ryan tomorrow. There you go. I want to write that down. I ain't gonna look at it right now. That'd be yeah. rude. Armadillo. Yeah, cream cheese. Okay, I got I got a I got a real t I got a Texan in here. Married to a good buddy of mine. Cream cheese, fellow cream cheese. Corey! Yeah, he's my brother right there. <laughs> so, uh, okay, right here, guys, he wants to make armadillo eggs. They're stuffed jalapenos wrapped in bacon and deep fried. They're wh what is it? They're, they're stuffed jalapenos with cream cheese. Okay. They're wrapped in bacon. So you got to you gotta gut the jalapenos out. Yeah, okay. I've done, stuff, I've done stuffed jalapenos, but I've just baked them mm -hmm. without anything else than that. Yep, nope. and this one is um, you wrap it in bacon, you deep, you drop it in a deep fryer. Okay, yeah, I just bake mine. I didn't fry mine. I just did. Uh, yeah, I've I've done that recipe, but with cream cheese. I, I just got reminded with cream cheese, so make sure you know that cream cheese. Yes, I d I've done mine with cream cheese. Yep, just pinch bake. off. Yep. like I stuffed the boat, and then I and there's yeah. a local meat shop that does the smoked bacon. I didn't know that's what they were called, but you fry in them. Yeah, I've yeah. always baked mine, so that's my probably my difference from everybody else's. Down south, we uh, yes, everything. you can smoke them, Ryan. You can smoke anything, brother. Yes. You can smoke a pizza yes, birthday yeah. cake if you'd like. Oh, Hold I'm on. mostly told that by my friend that you can use ground beef too. In the in the armadillo eggs, I wouldn't recommend eating a real armadillo though. He said ground pork. I don't know. We'll we'll figure it out, Ryan. We'll put our heads together. Okay. We'll figure it out. There you go. Ground pork, bacon, both pork products. Probably there's different variety. There's so many different recipes. So always suggest. Don't tell a Texan that. Do not tell a Texan that. Well, we're up here in Ohio. These are Ohio. These we'll call them groundhog. Okay. We'll call them groundhog eggs instead of armadillo hey. eggs or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, man. So, uh, lastly, what is the yes. what is the what are you looking? What's next on the docket? What's your next big project in the barbecue world? What's your next thing that you're like? I'm doing it. I'm conquering it. Well, I am. Right now, I'm kind of like in panic mode because of the fact that I did not think this was going to work. I Facebook's falling on its face for me. Um, uh, Instagram was, is working right now. Uh, you saw you saw my the, the country uh, country guy that was in your chat a little while ago. We were me and him are friends on Facebook, but because of because of TikTok, Instagram's taking off a little bit. So my next big thing is. All these people that are sending me stuff is getting them shirts or hats or something because I feel like a total jerk. They're sending me stuff. I'm not sending anything out because now I got these people that are they're happy at what I'm doing and, and you know they're really appreciative of what I'm doing, but they're sending me stuff and I'm like, oh crap, I need to send them something. You know, if it's a shirt, if it's a hat, something. So that's next immediately. Future, potentially a food truck. Um, but my fear with that is if I monetize this, am I gonna love it anymore? Yeah, so that's a big fear for me. Yeah. Um, Ryan, he does not have his own barbecue sauce or seasoning line for sale, but he does make his yes. own seasoning, and he does make his own barbecue sauce. Right. It's that, it's that fear I got to get over. Like, okay, there. I have to accept the fact that some people are going to like it, some people are not, and yeah. that's hard for me to grasp. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. Um, we want everybody just to love us. Let's do the trick. Yeah, I, yeah. How could a trip? I, 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 I gotta 
trippers. I'm heading chop medic. To, Thank you, brother. I'm getting channels of taco trippers, so we gotta figure out what that is. Okay. I, I've never I've I don't know. But see, I see I, I just want everybody to know that I'm interviewing you guys because you guys are the experts. I just want to talk talk smack. You know, and say mine's okay. awesome. I am a stay at home. I'm not stay at home. I am just a home chef. I don't yep. even have a smoker. I don't have charcoal. I have a a, a now clean grill for all that wanted, wanted to hate on my damn dirty grill. It's I, I got some stuff off of it now, so everybody can all the all the damn police oh can get God. off my ass. <laughs> Tree <Treat us. laughs> But you know, so I'm going to do my best to keep up with you guys. But I'm telling you now, do not lose to me. Because my reputation is not nearly on the level of you. No, and the but thing I'm going to sit know, there and go down with my shit. Me. I'll go down with my plate of, every time. The thing is, a lot of people don't realize about me, that, and, and you know, and I've, I've seen it before, and I've had, and I've actually corrected people because they think, oh yeah, well you're some, you're a big shot barbecue guy. I'm like, no, I'm really not. You don't understand. Is I've only, I've been doing this for just over a year. Um, I'm literally learning as I go. I'm trying new things because I want to try new things, not because necessarily because I've seen them. Um, I take inspiration from others, and but I try to make it my own, or I try to, okay, I see what you did there, but I want to do this. Um, I am not an expert. I've never been in competition. I, in fact, thought about doing one here in the near future, and I don't think it's going to come to pass because when I go through these competition people that are doing competition, they, they have this precise way of trimming everything. I'm like, I am not there yet. I really not there yet. And I'm like, okay. And that's, and that one of those things I was going to do down the line was road to competition. I was going to find a competition a year or some change away or however long. And I'm, I was going to, you do videos to push myself to get to as, get as good. If I enter my first competition and I suck, guess what? I sucked, but I learned something, there but you I am not a master. I still make dry brisket. I have these slips and you know what? I'm not going to hide it. I, if I screw up right there on TikTok video, I guess what? I'm not trash the video. You're going to see my warts and all because not, so, not so you can learn, but you can see that even if I, if one day I do become that good, you can come back to these and say, you know, there was a time he was human too. You know what? I actually have a video right now. I can't delete because I bombed. it. I tried to get so cute with a meal and I bombed it. It was, I took a, uh, it was like, you know, some basically some clearance steaks that were like on sale at the local uh, grocery store. And they were like the top sirloin steak, you know, the real rough and tough, you know. Yeah. And I tried to beat it out and I tried to get cute and put in like a layer of, I had like some Gouda cheese here from a local cheese house. So I had some Gouda. I put a layer of salami. I put some cream cheese in there and I thought it was cute. I'd roll it up and it was going to be all nice. Oh, thank you, man. Oops. Stop, stop, stop. But uh, <laughs> you just keep rolling it up. And I'm like, oh, look how cool it is. I tied little bows on the strings. And it was gorgeous. <laughs> it was absolutely gorgeous. I threw it on the grill. Oh, the sear was immaculate. You know my sear game's good. You seen my chicken the other yes, night. I saw and, that was good. And then I'm sitting, I'm like, man, the cheese is just gooing out the side. And I'm like, oh, thank you, God. This is going to be the best meal ever. I take a bite, and I'm like, yeah. Uh -oh. yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I went right over the trash and I opened it up and I'm like, "F this!" <laughs> Just threw Gone. It. Yeah. So I took a video and I even tried to sell it my video and I'm like, "It's so good!" <laughs> and I'm sitting, I'm like, "I can't post this." Still. <laughs> no, you gotta post it, man, because you know it's it's one of those things like you know I failed, I'm good, I learned. Big yeah, look at that. <laughs> That's the new thing, man. Everyone now, everyone's coming out now. The, the, the sunglasses yeah. are awesome, man. This is like such a cool because it records these lives. So, like, I know the first guy did you and me. Like that, that was funny stuff, man. So yeah, we yeah. can. It's going to be edited. Um, it's recorded forever. Oh, yeah, that's too. Ah, there we go. Oryx, what's up? <laughs> oh my goodness, this has Mexico, been an okay. absolute blast, man. This has been friend, well, friend of mine. Hold on, one more thing. One more thing. Yes, on please. Next I got week, lots of brisket. Time. Brisket, Mexican street corn, armadillo eggs, deviled eggs, potato salad. Street Mexican street corn is one thing. Corey Kraft, who was the moderator who brought me into Texans moderator team, has really, he even sent me a text message. But Mexican street corn. Like, it must be good. I got to take his word for it. <laughs> yeah. He's from Texas, though. He knows his stuff. Huh. Yeah. I'm, uh, 
So, I guess, did you have a food that you said that you're really looking forward to trying? Ooh, have you? I done... want. I want to get a hold of picanha. I want to get a hold of picanha, a whole one. Okay. What? What it was? Really, it? it's been called picanha. P i p picanha. Picanha. What is that? It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a beef. It's beef, but it's got a really heavy layer of uh, a fat layer on it. And it's, it's, it's one of those things that I kind of have an idea of what I want to do with it, but it's one of those, I'm afraid to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I saw Google foods do it one time. And when he got through with it, it looked amazing. Trim the fat down. So, so many ways or so, or to so thick. And I think he slow roasted. It's been a while since I watched the video, but Kanye is P I C A N H A. I don't see their N A K. Someone spelled it P I C A N A, Picana. Yeah, I think I think that's how it's done. Yeah, it's a sirloin cap. Everyone's saying, "Okay, dude, this is new to me. Yeah. This is amazing." Yeah, yeah. popular in South America. Okay. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's yeah, I should know. <laughs> I I get a lot of questions on Cobalt. the lamp. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Cobalt's telling me it's the we call the biceps from from femoris. It's what they carve at Brazilian steakhouses. Okay. Which probably explains why it's paying the butt to get here. No, it's awesome, though. Um, and I got Guadalupe Cook over here. It comes from Brazil, and she should know. She's from Ecuador. Yeah. It's <laughs> for slow cooking. Oh, man, this is yes, see, this is something. Is. So is it an affordable cut of meat, then, since it's kind of like a rough, tough piece of meat? I don't know. I've never seen it. Never seen it locally. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> hey, Bobby Joe. <laughs> Like Corey over here, Wagyu beef. Yeah, Wagyu beef. You want to give me two hundred fifty bucks? Yeah, Corey? say uh, let's start a let's start to let's start a GoFundMe page for some Wagyu folks. Yeah, no shit. How about hey. this? You guys start a GoFundMe. Get me a plane ticket to Japan. I'll get you some freaking A five and put that shit up over there. Alabama <laughs> man, seventy. I need to give you a follow too. By the way, that was very. Yeah, Alabama man's my guy, man. I yeah, like he's him. awesome, man. We'll have to get him on here at he some is. point too. Uh, he goes, yeah, it's affordable. He goes, it was affordable. Big Ed goes, it's affordable now. It's pricey. Yeah, like everything. Yeah. Yeah. Tell them if you can't find one, get with me. Cook it outside said get with him if you can't um if you can't uh find it. <laughs> Who's that? Cook it outside. I thought I had him. I thought I thought we were following each other. Well, he's on mine, so he can't see huh? your comments on your side. That's the one thing oh, okay. that TikTok's gotta figure out. So people have to like toggle back They're and forth on the chat rooms, but Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Okay, I so mean, I'm being told by Cobalt that the picanha is not tough. It has some bite, but it's more about lots of flavor. Well, and uh, I'm guessing, I got a uh, young lady, a guado cook over here. She's saying Fort Wild has good cuts of meat. It sounds like a meat market because uh, <laughs> we don't have that. I, th I think she's in Miami, so that doesn't help me. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's like telling so. me, like, everyone's begging me to not shut this interview down. Like, everyone's like, they're so, oh, I have awesome. never had this much interaction on a live before. This is crazy. Like, everyone loves Hey, you want me to set the benchmark? I set the benchmark. <laughs> you did, bro. Like, these poor yes! guys after you, yeah. man. Yeah. Flex that. <laughs> I'm getting no, ripped that, tonight. <laughs> oh, I didn't say the rest of it. I didn't say the rest of it. <laughs> no, because it was it, there was a video I duetted I duetted a long time ago, and it it still trips me up to this day. We're it, was, use right. it was this woman. If you if you go back, I I don't know if I want to talk about it here. God, I'm, okay, I'm gonna talk about it here. <laughs> it was this girl. She she's dancing here. I'm getting ripped tonight. She does that. R.I.P. That and she still up this massive part. <laughs> and then it was cut in by another another one and she had she had the Carolina Southern accent she says did that just come out of a whisker biscuit I'm like oh my God. <laughs> I, was like, I was in there duetting the thing and I knew it was coming but it still was funny and you just see like a spray of beer just right out there like, <laughs> okay <laughs> did that just come out of a whisker biscuit I'm like what the fuck <laughs> And what's even worse than that is my because I, I thought it was just a funny way of saying her butt. Then my wife came home. No, have you actually heard the song? I'm like, no. And she explained it to me. And then it was even funnier. Oh <clears throat> my god. <laughs> we're we're talking about whisker biscuits on dude sessions, folks. That's what's happening. Go figure. Yeah, the the I bar, the back here bar was here. <laughs> it got lowered a little bit for the next guy on that one, but it, I don't know. Or some people would say it's now up here. So it depends. That's that's a different. Um, 
<laughs> oh boy. All right. So here's a good one. Uh, lamb. I recently have tackled lamb chops. Um, I dominated them and it was unfricking believable because I even had like fresh nice. rosemary in the freezer from last harvest of fall. So I had fresh <laughs> rosemary. I know that's, I get it. I get it. Um, but no, lamb, I, I, uh, I'm close to being the next guy. Yeah, you're right, big Ed. Um, but, uh, no, I thought the lamb was amazing. Um, I had yeah. once slow cooked like a lamb roast, lamb chop, like a lamb roast. And I did not like it. I did not like it broiled in the oven. I thought it, it ruined me yeah. for years. I wouldn't try it, but then I yeah. grilled some actual good lamb chops yeah. and they were un freaking believable so have you done them and how do you do them lamb rack i've done a lamb rack not chops yet so you, rack clean, you clean the bones and all that stuff right afterwards i left them on the bones to cook okay now the, the problem with the bones you get them too hot you get them you come over the cook them over the co- coals they'll break down wrap i wrap mine in foil i did some crazy rosemary thing i just i, I literally typed in google and pick something Rosemary, several other things, garlic paste, the garlic sauce, and it worked. And literally, I put it on the I put it on the grill, two minutes each side, and then I put it on the off offset with the offset side with the bones covered in foil, pointing towards the, the heat. And I just based that thing every every five minutes so base 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 base. I have a video on it. It didn't turn out perfect. However, like I said, I'm not going to hide my faults because I'm human too. I get distracted. I see a shiny object and I chase it and I overdo things. For example, the first time I cooked my signature thing, which would be the uh, Italian sausage with the cheese on it. And I made that on the Blackstone my first time I was live. I got so caught up in a conversation. I almost forgot about it. I do that. But um, <laughs> though I didn't intentionally overcook, it came out the, the outside. It's supposed to be a nice even pink all the way through. The outsides were gray, like I had gotten too got it too intense. Um, I found out one. I learned two things that day. My coals were too hot. Number one, number two, I didn't pull it off soon enough to let it rest. And if you have never smoked or you're trying to get into grilling or smoking, resting is your most critical step. I do not care what you think you know. Rest. If you don't rest properly, you are going to get a crappy food. This is a some a lesson that I have recently learned within the last year. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, maybe during COVID when when we were home and I was cooking a lot more. Um, yeah, because I started resting and taking a slip of butter on the top of it, and I let mine rest with a little piece of stick butter. Then it pulls that <laughs> butter down into the fibers as it's resting. So then you get the butter inside the middle of the meat. But you are right. I couldn't agree with you more. Resting is the is the absolute best. Thank you, mm-hmm. Alabama man. You got you you guys are being way too kind over here. Seriously, you guys are, <laughs> I love all of you, man. This that's, is <laughs> that's that positive vibe, man. I'm telling you, I I don't know how it spread the way it did, but man, I am loving every minute of it. I'm loving the fact that we have I've dealt with three assholes total over the past few months, and I've dealt with them accordingly by just ignoring them. Or getting rid of their comment or blocking them outright. Yeah, it's... and you know, and I expect my guys, my my followers, and I do the same thing for them. Is let me know that they're there. I will go make sure they vanish because I don't want that BS here. Texas got a good thing going. He's got a lot of people supporting him in his endeavors, and I respect the shit out of that. And I don't. I'm not going to be able. To, I'm not going to try to equal him, but I am going to promote the same thing he does, which is positive. We bring each other up. We don't let each other down. If we screw up, guess what? We screw up. Hey, man, do you want to know how you can do better? No, you just want to figure it out for yourself? That's cool, man. You did a pretty good job, though. No big yep. deal. Uh, I'm excited to grow. What's funny is, you know, uh, we got some guys over here. I got Big Ed fishing. He's going to be doing a fishing uh a dude session with me on Monday. He's about 2000 followers. You and I have been like neck and neck and it's, and then like, you know, um, the other guys I met like Pew Pew Life and Girl King Houston, like they we're all in that same boat of getting established on here. And I'm just so freaking excited for all of us to kind of just grow together. And it's all about networking and uh, Mo. And I am so glad that I started to do this dude sessions because I would have never met you. I would have never reached out. No. I would have never been like, Hey, would you have hopped on? 
And like, and next thing you know, you and I are texting throughout the day about the world's yeah. problems, and we're sitting there talking food all the time. And it's just, it's just amazing to get to meet not only you but everybody that's been dropping these comments and these over excessive amount of unnecessary gifts and everything. And this like know. the Crazy. cooking community. I mean, it's dude. This has been a wild show. Uh, but yeah. no, I mean, seriously, like this has been. All of this has been so rewarding. I'm so glad that I get to share it with you and everybody on here. I'm looking forward to you know, keeping this thing. Uh, um, you know, I, I just uh, I'm just excited to watch all of us grow together, man. Um, and Mo, I am going to wrap this up because uh, we've had a long, long week, and I, I got to get upstairs and, and get to bed here. We got a big day tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so I, I know everyone's gonna be mad, but I oh, promise thanks, Big Ed. We got we got more. Yeah, Big Ed's the man. Give him a follow. He Appreciate it, man. The man. He just sent me some fire. I'm so that's so awesome. Northern California boy, he is the man. The, you'll love Big oh, Ed. Yeah. Uh but no, we're gonna do this again. I know everyone's gonna be mad I'm cutting this off, but we got more folks. We can't we can't bust through everything on the same night. So no. in conclusion to this unbelievable dude session. We had the man, yes. the myth, the legend. He's wearing a sweet hey. Planet Hollywood shirt. He's down in Georgia. Oh. He's drinking his beer from a purple cup. This is a judge-free zone. But we still love him. He is the man, the lift, the legend, as I said. Thank you for joining <laughs> Dude Sessions. Can't wait to have you back on here. Oh, man. Big I'm Mo. To it. Let's go. Let's go. Thanks, brother. I appreciate you, man. And I appreciate everybody that came in. I really do. I love it. And I'm going to keep doing what I do. I uh, can't do it by myself. I need everybody with me too, because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna move up without people behind me or people in front of me too. <laughs> you guys are all the Cheers, best. Brother. Cheers to you. Cheers to everybody drinking one in their own in their own home right now. This one's for you guys. Happy Friday. Happy weekend. Dude sessions tomorrow night, nine PM. Uncle Buck Roscoe Joan on here. You know he's gonna be drinking some beers and talking about veteran awareness. We're a big believer in that here. So oh, keep yeah. it locked in here on that's, Dude that's Sessions. Right. Dude Network. You're the best. See you, Mo. See you, Mo. And take care, man. Talk to you soon. See y'all. <laughs>